Hello everybody, this is Crafting Resident and welcome back to a brand new video today and actually a brand new series day. So what this series is, as you've probably seen from the title of this video, is creating a map. Now I've wanted to create a Mine another Minecraft map for quite a while now, um, I really do enjoy creating maps and I noticed that my last kind of map tutorial build I did um, it's been done pretty well on YouTube, it's got a lot of views and people seem to have found it really helpful and um, things like that. So I thought, well, instead of just making one and kind of not making it into video, just kind of making it in my own time, why don't I take you guys from start to finish on how to create a Minecraft map. So from the concept phase, which is going to be today's video, um, all the way to putting it into a world machine and softwares like that, such, and then putting it into world painter, and then finally get it into Minecraft and making some like adjustments in Minecraft for it as well. So today, as I mentioned, we're going to be having a look at the concept phase, and as you can see, we are here in the software paint.net, and it's a fantastic software. Um, I personally probably prefer it to like Photoshop and things, probably more because I've had more experience with this one, not necessarily because it's better. But I find that paint.net is a very good program, and I do use it quite often. And for creating a map, um, I generally want to use the software which I'm most experienced at, and that is paint.net. But if you are using Photoshop or maybe Microsoft Paint, possibly, um, then you can follow along with these same tutorials. This is just a concept, so we're just drawing it out for now. Um, probably Microsoft, uh, yeah, Microsoft Paint is probably going to be a little bit more difficult because we haven't got these layers. Um, so, anyway, without further ado, we're going to have a look um, at how we'll start creating this map. So, I've kind of got a bit of a layout on a piece of paper in front of me. Uh, of how I want to design it and there's a few things we need to do before we can start drawing out that design onto the computer. So we need to adjust a few things such as the image size, so we want to go and resize the canvas and get rid of this main maintain aspect ratio. Now I know the map I'm going to be making for Minecraft is going to be a square so I want to kind of get a um, but a square shape on it so I'm going to do 100, uh, well, sorry, 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels to get this square shape. You can see um, quite a large shape, we could probably, yeah we'll leave it at 1024, that'll probably be fine. Um, so we've got this bit of a square here, and now we're going to start drawing on it. So because I'm creating this map for a specific purpose, I need to put some like uh, little points on it, basically spawn points for Minecraft, because I'm wanting to, basically, um, I'm wanting to create a map for somebody, and with that map it's kind of meant to be a bit of a like a game mode and um, you have loads of different spawn points for loads of players and they all kind of um, converge and you have a big battle going on and then there's some victorious player at the end who wins the game. So what we're going to do is lay out a few spawn points. So we can actually create a new layer first. So we've got the background here, we're going to ignore that for now, we can probably just turn it off to be honest, although actually it would look probably nice if we left it on. So I'm just going to kind of mark the spawn points with a letter X. Um, and let's just pop it round about there, I think. I want, actually, I wanted it a bit further away from the corners. Uh, you want them a fair bit inland, um, let's say. And then we're going to put a few more down. I'm wanting about, probably about five or ten, well, about between five and ten spawn points dotted around the map. Uh, probably eight would actually be the best number to have them around. But we're going to put another one here. Um, and I'm going to put a few on each corner, like so. Um, like here, and as you can see, they're not quite perfectly in line, but it doesn't really matter. Um, you just want to kind of dot them around and make sure they're fairly evenly spread. Um, however, I'm kind of leaving this centre area here blank for this specific map because I'm going to have some sort of terrain feature in the middle, I'm thinking. Um, so I'm going to put another spawn point probably around about here, maybe. Um, and we don't want to bunch them up too much, so let's put... Um, maybe another one here. It, it's a bit random, but you want to kind of have a good idea about where you're putting them. So you don't want don't want to put them too close to each other because it will cause those two players to converge and fight there, and it will kind of that that little battle will happen too quickly in, in Minecraft. Um, so you want to spread them out a bit so they have time to gather resources um, before they start engaging combat combat on them. Um, so now that we've done that, we're going to want to put another spawn point, uh, probably. I'm kind of tempted to put one there, but it seems a bit close to this one here, so, hmm, maybe around about there, let's say. Um, yeah, I think I'll do. So we've got kind of a spread of spawn points. There seems to be a lack of spawn points down this corner, so we'll just put eight in there and just put one there, shall we? These are probably going to change in a bit, um, but they're kind of just basically out of where we want spawn points to be. So now we've got all these different X's around. 
we want to start designing where the players, we intentionally want the players to go. Um, don't forget, Minecraft is an open world game, so the players can go anywhere, but you kind of want to guide them through certain areas um, and create these focal points within the map, and I think that's such an important thing. I've kind of got a bit of a list here, of what I can read you out in a minute, of things what you really need to consider when making a map. So, number one is this, you want to focal point. So, you want the path to like kind of go in a way around the map where maybe the player turns the corner and it's just, wow, look at that. It just looks stunning. You, you just want kind of that effect. So, um, there's such amazing terrain from certain like vantage points around. You kind of just want to design the map that way. So, the path has these different areas where the players can either feel quite enclosed in like maybe a cave or something like that or a ravine. Um, to somewhere where they can see almost the entire map or some specific terrain feature which yeah you want to have the amazement there with the map um, that's a really important thing and one thing you can um, do to kind of achieve this is you kind of using like a meandering path this is quite effective because you can kind of block out certain areas of the path with dif different terrain and if you have like a meandering path it means that you can add more path it's just it's just very helpful um, I think when designing maps. So we're going to get this um, line slash curve tool here and I'm thinking I want kind of a, this area here to be a bit mountainous. So this spawn point, let's actually move it up a bit. Um, we want this spawn point to be kind of near the edge of the map and we're just going to focus on each spawn point individually and kind of track where we want the players to go. So I'm also very quickly just going to draw a bit of a circle here because this is where we want all the players to end up basically. Um, so if we just make another layer and we just want to kind of remind ourselves that is where we want like the main um, combat to occur in a map. Um, so we're just going to pop something around about there, I think. So now we've done that, we're going to create another layer, and this is going to be our paths layer. Now you can rename these, so I'm just going to call this paths, um, and I'm going to call the other one spawn points. So I'll just sort that out very quickly. So I've now renamed these little layers here. And I just want to kind of go through like the points of what you want to do when creating a map. So let's just create this new piece of um, paper here. Not paper, new uh, canvas here. And there's a few points which I've kind of got on a piece of paper outlined here to kind of create um, an interesting map for yourself. So the paths, you probably want to be quite curving, undulating, um, and it just adds interest. And you can quite often inset those paths into the train to kind of create a natural like hollow in the train um, to basically kind of emphasize where you want the players to go so they can exit out there but it's kind of just a bit more difficult and just guide it just it works as a bit of a guide to guide players through the map now you can use a few techniques in the actual game when creating maps so you want to kind of have like contrasting um, paths and they're kind of the main paths where you want to go along and then you can have sort of um, different colored paths on the outside to, to kind of ch change the contrast and it kind of um, helps players to pick a path um, and kind of is more um, is more likelihood of them picking like the paths which are very clear cut in the landscape. You can really see where they're going and things like that. Um, but you also want some of these side paths as well, and these are really important just to have that kind of open worldy feel that um, they don't necessarily have to go off the paths, but they can still explore with the paths. So you want to kind of create this contrast with the paths. Um, so what you might want to do is like create a very different color. So if you had like a let's get like a sort of dirty color. Um, like, can I get, yeah, something like that. Um, so this is maybe like the dirt and grass sort of thing. So if we just get a paintbrush wherever it's gone, uh, let's increase the size of this a little bit. So here's like your dirt path in Minecraft and you might have some um, grass at either side of it. Um, and you kind of just want to create a bit of a contrasting path. So if we get um, a different color, uh, let's make a bit more yellow maybe. Uh, something a bit like that. Uh, I want a bit more white. I know, I'm just going to mess around. Obviously we're not in Minecraft yet to do uh, so there we go, that's a bit of a pathy colour. And you have these like little paths going along the centre, it kind of emphasises that route. Um, but you also want these extra paths going off the side, so if we just um, get that brown colour back in, you can kind of create these extra paths which come off to the side, which aren't quite as um, clear cut where they're going, um, but it still kind of encourages players to explore a little bit. So I think that's quite important too. So you have these contrasting paths, they're really important, but we're not going to get to that yet because we're obviously just designing it. I'm just kind of getting to the ideas of the extra paths and how, how it might have a fork in the road sort of thing. Um, the meanders are really good, so I'll draw that out. So if we have a meandering path like so, 
and let's say we have some amazing architectural structure up in a, a distance, you can create kind of rocks around the area like so to obscure that. Um, so if you imagine the character walking down here, that rock kind of obscures the architectural feature or whatever. So you can do that and this is quite often done in Skyrim and places like that um, and maps like that. So you can kind of add different terrain around the area, so you can have trees there for example um, to obscure the path and then you can have um, other little features to kind of emphasize the other paths coming off it. So that's where you'd want to use meandering paths because certain areas block it and then you have come around this corner and you're like, wow, look at this over here. And that's really important too. Um, and let's just clear this all away. There we go. And there's a few other things. Um, so yeah, we've covered the fork path, the contrasting paths and the kind of meandering ones. Um, you also want to kind of create a uh, difference in the area. So you might want to have some paths like near down a river. Um, some up near the mountains and just create that interesting contrast and that is pretty much everything really I've got for this little path section um, yep it looks like everything off my sheet I've got this little sheet here of notes what I want to use when creating a map so they're kind of the main things just just create interest with it really so I'm going to swap piece of paper now I've got a different piece of paper as you can probably hear me shuffling now um, grab it there we go so we've got this spawn point up here and I've kind of drawn it out a little bit with pen and paper already um, how I want this map to look like but as I mentioned I want this to kind of be a mountainous area up here so with mountains you will naturally get the meandering path so let's grab um, how thick is that mm, want a bit thinner probably let's do about four I'll do um, and then can we get an arrow on this there we go there's the arrow so we're wanting to create this little path kind of coming down here. So if we kind of just grab this arrow and generally just kind of put it in the area we want to create the path. So let's make this bit of a meander. So you just want to create this sort of meandering path and going down hill because obviously in hilly areas um, people in the past have naturally put meanders in the paths and it's just to reduce the gradient for when you're walking up it and things like that. So that's the reason why there is meanders in the path and you can just recreate that as well. Um, when designing maps for people. So there we go, got this bit of a meander and I want this to carry on a bit further so let's put another meander in. Um, I want to get it somewhere around like here and get a few more meanders, there we go. Uh, meandering is generally what rivers do but you can kind of apply it to ma uh, paths on maps in this way. Um, and then I've kind of got one more arrow coming off it down here which kind of leads round here-ish almost, let's put it there actually. And we've kind of got this bump in the path around here, so let's kind of shape it how we want it. Um, and let's put one there. And you just generally want to create this sort of pattern of where the paths are going to go. So I'm going to use the black paths to emphasize where we want the characters to go, and maybe like a different color, so maybe grey paths uh, for maybe sub paths. So if you come down here, we want a sub path kind of going down here. That's a bit of a too dark grey. Let's do that one um, to make the difference clearer. There we go and just kind of put these extra paths in around the area just so you can see how you can encourage players to go to different places um, and we want also another one here so see how this path kind of naturally has this curve in it um, you want to maybe add another sub path going down here um, which kind of it kind of provides a fork in the road for players to decide where they want to go so I'm just going to add that in here and shape it a bit better so kind of the players will naturally see this path coming up, but then they'll see it curve away. So it has that bit of an opportunity to change where they want to go and give that bit of choice. Um, so that's why that's there. And then we're probably going to add some rivers here, um, some something like that to add interest down this area. And I think that's probably going to do for these paths here. And I've also noticed we're getting a little bit too close to that spawn point. So I'm going to move that down here. And I've noticed I've drawn all the paths on the wrong layer. So I'll just quickly swap that. There we go, I just swap the paths over to the path layer down here, as you can see, we'll just move those out of the way. Now, there we go, so we've got our little paths in over here, and we've got this spawn point here. So we kind of want to create a bit of a opportunity for a confrontation in groups early on in the game, just to make it a bit more exciting. So if people wanted to make videos out of this and stuff, if you have like an early confrontation, it kind of um, just kind of adds interest and things like that. So we can add a little path down here for this group. Um, at this spawn point so if we put a arrow down here and um, we can um, once again kind of create a bit of a meander if we wanted to I'll probably add that in later 
Um, but this spawn point can be a little bit more open, so it doesn't kind of lead off other paths. We can have multiple paths, multiple paths coming straight off the spawn point, like so. So we'll just add those paths in, and we can just kind of create this conflict area here, and maybe have some sort of settlement there or something, maybe a mine or a camp or something like that, um, just to have that area where there's a potential for these two groups to interact. So now we want some other, um, oh, I've kind of just changed the colour of that. Now we want some other paths coming off this spawn point, and these maybe want to go down here, um, something like this. And again, we can create this meander, because we want all the paths to have that sense of excitement if you come around a corner and see great scenery somewhere. So we want all paths to have a little bit of a meander like so, um, as much as we can anyway, because it... If you think each spawn point has a different group of people, and if they're all looking at it, you want them all to experience that amazing scenery in front of them. So by creating like a focal point with these different types of paths, you can do that. Now, I'm thinking of putting a bit of a city here, so we're going to just kind of leave that path where it is for now. And probably just carry on this this path down here. And uh, we can probably create a bit of a... Oh, I put that somewhere wrong there. Um, and we can just kind of create a few more paths um, for choice for the players and we'll just do that down here like so and we can have another path leaving, leading to a city so the likelihood is with these two groups let's say you've got a 25% chance of coming down this path 25% chance of coming down this path and blah 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 um, it probably is a fairly small chance of them interacting but there's still a chance there um, and it, that's definitely going to be interesting for the game mechanics um, so as you can see plenty of paths and they have a reasonably high chance they've got an opportunity here to leave the path an opportunity here to leave the path um, and obviously they can just walk off the path anywhere they want um, but yeah it just kind of creates a um, a fairly high likelihood of um, those players interacting here so I'm kind of going to put, put all the extra paths in um, in the same sort of style and then we can move on to something a little bit more interesting so here we go, this is the map um, paths I've created and I do just want to emphasise, I've kind of just put these down randomly um, but it, it just kind of allows for a natural area where players can go of course they can go anywhere in the map, it's, it's going to be Minecraft where, where, where this map's going to be kind of based around um, but it does, it just kind of guides them and it creates these natural areas where the players will want to go. Um, quite often players will want to stick to the outside of the maps. That's why there's a lot of paths going around here and less towards the centre. You kind of want a lot of them converging towards the centre area. As you can see there's a lot of converging paths um, around the centre. Where there's kind of just a lot of paths generally around the outside. So that's why it's kind of created like this. And I just want to outline where the collision areas are going to be on this. And this is what you want to think about on the map. And we're going to do it in different colours. So red is going to be very likely a collision area. Um, and this is going to be where the paths join. And then there's going to be um, the green where it's going to be less likely that we'll do some colour or something like that. So let's pick a decent size area. Maybe a bit bigger than that. There we go. So this is kind of just um, planning stage. So did I say red was where it was less likely? I can't remember. But we're going to do red is maybe where they're most likely to clash I think we're gonna do that color makes sense um, so the areas where they're most likely to come into contact with each other the players are uh, probably gonna be areas like this so we'll add a bit of a dot there and there's gonna be other areas around here so you can kind of see there's three paths going into one there gonna be quite likely to collide here and these are gonna be where you want the cities really so uh, where they're gonna be the most likely that's where you want the kind of the most risk to be for the players so the cities where there's gonna be the best loot um, the, the players are going to have to kind of like balance up whether they want to stand the risk of encountering other players or whether they want the loot. So where you're getting all these paths converging is where you want the um, is where you want the best loot and where you want the cities. Um, but as you can see, there's a few of these kind of a lot of paths going into one, but some of them are minor paths, so they're not going to be quite as um, going to be players are going to be less likely to be there. Um, they're probably going to be fair likely to be here, so you can probably add a little bit of reward for them being there. But some of these back here, um, although there is a plenty of paths leading to that one place, they're still probably quite likely to not. Uh, sorry, they're probably not very likely to go down this area, so you don't want to put a city there. So the places I think I want to put cities on it are probably areas around here, maybe. So let's find an appropriate place. Um, yeah, I think around about here. So if we um, scale this down a bit and just. Um, uh, so you want to put a little city up here on a mountain. I'm thinking a mountain's going to go there, by the way. Um, and there we go. We'll put a little bit of a city there. And there's going to be a few other collisions down here. Um, 
probably around there they're fairly likely to end up um, but I think I'd probably like to leave that as a town to be honest um, I don't think a city will be well suited there maybe one over here let's find somewhere where the, a lot of paths converge so maybe a city somewhere around here we can have another path leading off down here so that, yeah I think that sounds good let's just add another path in um, let's do it grey so it's less likely to converge oops that's quite large isn't it um, let's just put down four and change the colour back is that going to work thank you uh, let's put just another path in round about there and then they're going to be fairly likely to encounter other players there um, although it is a grey path so it won't be as likely um, so I think that's going to be where all the main cities go I would ri although it's not going to have a lot of clashing of players I think a city up in this top bit up here let's just um, add it back on them there we go um, it's an area city up here is going to be ace if we can build something like really impressive here although there's not going to be many players around there it's going to certainly be an impressive like uh, focal feature of the map so I think we're definitely going to put one up there and um, it's kind of given this zone here a bit of an advantage but I guess we could probably link other paths around to it maybe one from this spawn point over here um, you want to just create that sense of risk but um, I think we're just going to leave it because I think that, although it's going to be a bit of an advantage over here still um, it shouldn't serve too much of an advantage so we'll just leave it as that and possibly some sort of city up here um, I think we're going to want to have that a bit more of a town so let's add towns on there now um, let's, and we'll say towns and villages so we want a town probably here-ish um, definitely and let's add a few more towns around so we could probably have a town round about here on this village area so we'll probably add one here shall we say um, and definitely one here Definitely want down there, and we can all, probably also add a path down there. Although I might just leave it for now. Actually, uh, might change it later. Don't forget, always paths can change and things. Um, so there, where I think I'm going to want the towns. We don't want too many towns because uh, it's just going to be a lot of building involved. Maybe one here that could make a good collision up there. And yes, I think that's probably going to be about good. Uh, could possibly have one here, but there's a town there. It's in close proximity. Um, and probably not one there, we want something a bit more minor there so let's um, grab a different colour, let's say green and we're definitely going to put a sort of some sort of structure here for the, um, for the players and we're probably going to put one, there's one there uh, we could probably put one round about here although it's a bit close to this path and I didn't really want another I kind of want those two paths to intersect sort of thing um, definitely some sort of structure around here, we can probably have a few dotted around up here because it's going to be a high density of players and yeah, it's just you want to think where the high density of players is going to be really. Um, if you think, if we, we might be able to draw this on actually. So if um, get another one of these, and we kind of want a clear colour. So let's do that one there, um, and reduce that a little bit. So this is going to be a very rough idea of the density of players. And let's do purple for high density, um, and let's get a gradient. So the gradient is going to mark out where the players are mo most likely to be. So they're probably going to be quite likely in this area. Um, basically around all the spawn points so where these the, particularly around the paths but you kind of want the cities and stuff um, kind of around these high density areas around each spawn point and it obviously goes around paths as well um, so yeah I think we've pretty much got most of that mapped out now I want to add a few more interesting features but we'll probably do that later to be honest um, I think we've got most of our towns, cities, villages and landmarks marked out around here so we'll probably put one there actually um, and can we think of anywhere else to put one? definitely one there and oh I wanted to put some sort of special um, architecture thing up there and can we think of anywhere else let's have a look could be one there but it's giving this area a bit too much of an advantage then um, so it could be one up here maybe uh, we could do it a bit off the path so if they go exploring they might find one up there and there's definitely going to be a high density of things around this area but we're not going to draw those quite on yet because we want to really well plan what we're going to put in this area here so I think that's probably going to do us for little buildings. We could probably just dot a few more around, to be honest. Um, we could probably put one there. Let's put one there, yeah. And I think that's pretty much going to do us uh, for the path section and the building section. So now we're going to just want to plan out the basic terrain of what we want where. So that's going to include rivers, mountains, cliffs, and sort of things like that. Um, maybe canyons and just general terrain landform features, um, which will make this map interesting. So let's do that now. So what I've now done now is just kind of uncheck the cities and buildings um, area from this. Let's uncheck that for now. And um, we're just remaining the paths and spawn points. And we're going to click on this background layer here. 
So we want to lay down a basic background, which is going to be a blue ocean. So we're just going to um, put that everywhere. Let's just click somewhere like that. And it's now looking very, very blue. And now we're just kind of going to want to put on the basic landforms where we want them. So I'm probably just going to do this in yellow for beaches, because um, then we can kind of stack the different layers on top of each other. So let's grab some yellow. That'll do. So, oh, we didn't want that. That's not what I wanted. Uh, let's grab a bit of a yellow and just make it a bit darker like a beach. There we go. Something like that, maybe. And now we just want to go around and draw on the basic areas where we want they're gonna, there's going to be landform or land masses even. Uh, maybe not necessarily land masses because that's like continents, but you know what I mean, just basic land around the area. So we're definitely going to want some up in the corner and obviously around all the spawn points because you're not going to want them spawning in the middle of a lake. That is not particularly what you want. Um, so I wanted a bit of a river coming down here. So let's draw something like that. And you can see these little arrows here are separate for bridges. Um, so I wanted some sort of landform like that, and a, you want a, a river, not a, let's just pronounce that right, there we go, river, um, to kind of become a bit thinner, just kind of like natural um, how rivers float, so let's just make that a bit thicker up here, and we generally just want to keep adapting it. So I think I'm going to go around and carry on and put in all the basic landforms on the here. So there we go, I've added in all the different places where the rivers and lakes and ponds are going to be around the map. Uh, There's probably going to be expanded upon in the future, I'll probably add a few more lakes and ponds around um, when we come to design the map in a bit more detail. Um, I've just tried to concentrate it around some of the areas where there's going to be cities and things, so if we have a look on here, uh, there's going to be some rivers flowing along there, because obviously cities in real life crop up along where rivers are. Uh, we could probably just add another one over here actually, let's add another little tributary going down there. Or not tributary because it's kind of dispersing, but whatever. Um, so yeah, most cities you'll find will lie on areas where there are actually rivers. Um, just because in the olden days water was obviously essential um, to be close by. So obviously now you can pump water to areas a little bit more easily. Uh, but yeah, you'll find most cities will lie along some sort of river and things like that. So I think we've achieved that fairly well, we've got a river here. Um, we've got a bit of a bridge, it's a landmass in between sort of thing. And I wanted to add a few waterfalls in areas, so we'll mark those on in a minute with like a different colour, probably just a line or something going across like that, uh, to mark a waterfall. But yeah, I think that's going to be the basis of where all our rivers go in the map. And now it's uh, time to add the mountainous terrain in and sort of the hills and general height of the terrain. Um, and then we'll add some features in such as cliffs. So let's do that right now. Uh, we'll add the terrain in. So let's add some mountains. So let's get a bit of a rocky sort of colour. And I want some of these some of these spawn points to be around caves and things like that. Mountains, caves. Um, so yeah. So particularly some of these. In fact, I want most of the spawn points to be near mountainous areas, um, just because it provides that really nice focal point when you come and see the rest of the map. Um, Traveling down one of these paths, I think it's just really important to have these mountainous areas on. So it was definitely going to be a mountainous area in the middle. That's going to be some massive uh, mountain where you want most of the focal point to take place in it. Um, but we're going to want to put some mountains around here, up in these top corners maybe, something round about like so. Um, we just want that mountain just kind of skimming that po spawn point a little bit. And definitely a mountain around here. I want to add some sort of mountain enclosing this area like so. Um, let's kind of get something around about like that. Um, and we want some ravine going around here, so we'll add mountains area around here. And I'm just generally going to add in mountains where I think they they should go. Um, so I guess I'll do that right now. So here we go. I've added all the mountains into the map, or kind of the higher areas of land at least into the map. And this is kind of where I put them quite often around the edge to kind of close up the map almost, and often around the spawn points just so they have like an overlooking area. Um, around the spawn point, and especially when you're traveling down these paths, you want them to be, you want people to be able to see all around the map. So that's very important. There's a very large, you probably could probably be quite a bit larger, uh, mountainous area in the middle of the map, and that's where hopefully most of the players will try and aim to go. And we're just going to make it a little bit larger. Let's just add that little bit in there. There we go. And we can probably add a bit around there. There we go. And I've also drawn in a few of these lines here which represent cliffs. Now I've added cliffs around this area just to prevent players going down this area. There probably will be little paths leading down and things like that, uh, but it's just generally to obscure the player from travelling down there and they're kind of forced to travel a route around here like so. Uh, we could probably actually add in another path up here. 
a path would go very well if we just go on the path layer path would go very well just around there if we just add that onto four there we go um let's add it there and we can add just a path around like so so there we go i think we've added most of the landforms into it now i've got all the mountains where i wanted them on it and I think this map's going to look pretty good. And that was just a few other things we need to just plan out before actually starting the map. Which will be the next episode actually starting the map creation on World Machine. Um, what we need to add in is waterfalls. We need to add in more cliffs and just kind of emphasise the cliffs. Uh, flat areas and this sandy core is just meant to be the beaches. So we can kind of just go around and make it a lot more green. And we also want to add a new layer called foliage. So let's have a look. Let's have a look at that. Um, now we're going to have about five different colors on that uh, and we're just gonna go over to this one here we're gonna have foliage which is gonna be white which is like snowy sort of uh, tundra area we're gonna have a little bit darker which is gonna be like the sprucey sort of area and um, still very high up in the mountains uh, let's just kind of close it up a bit blah, blah, blah. there we go and um, we're gonna have general leaves which we'll just pick another color for let's pick um, one a bit darker than that hopefully there we go um, it's general like leaves and standard grass and forest like so. Uh, we'll just colour that in. Uh, we can probably add another little variant to that snowy one which will be ice terrain. Now I'm very excited about this ice terrain. I've got a great plan for this. Um, let's just, yeah I think that ice colour was originally pretty good there. Let's just alter that a little bit. There we go. We can add icy terrain in which is going to be this colour here. And I think I'll probably just do as we'll probably add some rocks in obviously as well. They're going to be important. Um, but they're more when you're actually designing the map. We don't really need to plan those out yet because they're going to be like rocks either side of paths and things like that. And I think that's probably going to cover most of the foliage. We could probably add some um, swampy stuff as well. Let's just call that swamp. That's the same colour as the other one. Let's get a different colour. Um, a yellowy colour. That could be swamp, shall we? Um, there we go. That can be swamp. We'll call that swamp. And now we'll go over to the main map. And we're going to add the cliffs, the waterfalls, the foliage and a few other things onto it so i'm wanting a waterfall around where the cliffs are so this is a bit of a gorge here and that is a landform which you get near rivers and let's just get a color for waterfall shall we let's um pick actually let's go back to that one and change a bit and let's just add waterfalls in so we're gonna have a waterfall round about here i'm thinking we're gonna have a waterfall somewhere up here maybe uh, probably have one there actually, that would be a cool little place. Um, maybe around here, probably we'll leave that for now though. Um, any more waterfalls we can add in? I don't want to add too many because it's going to be a difficult thing to add in uh, when creating the map. But we can probably add a few more in somewhere around here. Um, probably def oh, definitely around here, let's add waterfalls right across there. That's going to be cool because that's going to be quite a cliffy area. And let's just raise that terrain a little bit as well. Oh, I've had another. I've added all these to the new terrain. Hey ho, um, that'll be fine. So let's just add that in there. Let's fill it in. There we go. And fill that in. Perfect. And it kind of just went across the river. So I'll just fix that very quickly. Um, and we need the brush. Let's get a bit smaller. Like that. There we go. And fix that river. There we go. So we're gonna have waterfalls around there where the cliffs kind of um, drop away. Uh, we could probably have another little bit of a river coming down here and have a waterfall around about there maybe. Um, and I've changed the colour. So let's go back to the original colour. Uh, foliage. And let's grab that. There we go. And let's add waterfalls here. And I think that's probably going to mostly do us. can probably actually add a waterfall around here somewhere. Um, let's say around about there. And that will prevent players from coming up this area. So we can have definitely cliffs around there I guess. Uh, let's have a kind of a cliff somewhere like that and uh, we'll add another one in around about there maybe yeah that should be alright um, and yeah I think I'll do for now um, is there any more waterfall areas I'll have a look around so now I've added in a fair few waterfalls around the area and a few more cliffs because um, I think this really like emphasizes scenery and makes it look a lot better so now it's time to add the foliage in and we're just going to add a bit of snow on these areas up here and when I say snow it's going to be like snow plants, it's going to have a bit of snow up there as well um, that just general sort of uh, foliage you'd get up there so maybe like small little um, grassy plants and things 
Uh, I'm not too sure yet, but yeah, we're, we're going to want a bit of snow around these areas and some probably more up there, like so. Um, and we'll fill that in. And I'm just going to go around and add up plenty of snow in areas. We're probably going to want some more up here. Um, and let's kind of go around here. And can we go around that? There we go. Uh, and a bit of snow up there. We'll fill that. Oh, we messed it up somehow. Uh, let's have a look. Let's fill that in there. And yeah, that should be fine now. There we go. Bit of snow up there. And I'm just going to go around and add in where I think this um, foliage will best go with these foliages here. And then we'll pretty much be done for this concept uh, map. And then we'll just have a quick talk through of what we've done. And then probably round off the episode. So I'll go through and add a bunch of foliage in different places. So I'll start that now. So here we go, I think I've finished what I wanted to put on the map now. Um, so this is the main concept for the map and it looks a bit messy at the moment. Um, it looks like you're giving like some like toddler some crayon to draw a picture or something, I don't know. Um, but it is a bit messy, but it's got all the like fairly brief details we need to design a map on. So this is just basically the concept. And we've got a few key points in here, like almost all the um, spawn points are about equidistant from the um, center and some have like other uh, some have like landforms obstructing them or towns obstructing them and things like that so each uh, sort of person has got a fair each group of um, players in this minecraft map have got a fairly decent um, chance to win and um, not one person not one group is going to have an advantage over the others depending on where they spawn each spawn point's got its difficulties and its advantages like this one over here, it's got a lot of cities nearby, but the train's going to be really treacherous and things like that. And so each spawn point scores disadvantages and advantages for the players. And I think it's a very balanced map, this concept art so far. Um, so what we're going to be doing next video is transferring this into a software called World Machine and start planning the actual terrain and using a bunch of erosion features and things to make a, just a wonderful and stunning terrain. And I think that's going to be really cool. Um, and I'm definitely very excited for that. Today was just pretty much planning for the next video. But planning is essential and at least we've got that out of the way now and we're already start the map. So this is what I would suggest doing if you're wanting to create your own map. Just plan out all the main features you want to have in this map and just plan out where you want players to go with paths, where you want like waterfalls to be, the spawn points and there's all the details which you're going to need when creating a map and I'd certainly suggest doing it in layers because it's going to make it a lot easier. Um, as you can see I can just unclick all the different layers. There you go. It's kind of left an outline as well where the rivers are for some reason. I mustn't have filled that in properly. Uh, but yeah, definitely make it in layers. So Photoshop's good for that. And Paint.net, what I'm using here, is good for that. Um, Microsoft Paint, not so good for that. But I guess you could make several different images. It'd just be a bit of a pain. Uh, but yeah, that's probably why you'd want to use a software such as this one. Because um, you can just click the different layers on it. Go, go, I want to do the foliage. That's where we're going to have all the foliage. And just things like that. It's going to be really useful if you want to do that. Rivers, for example, if I can click on that, there you go, that's all the rivers. And this will make it a lot easier in the next video when we're wanting to um, actually create the train. So yeah, I think we've planned out this very, very well. We've got all the paths in and it's really essential, essential to do that. Get all the spawn points and paths in um, just so you know how to design a map. Because without this sort of planning, your map can be a bit messy. 
and not always look the best uh, the fight. Oh, I've just done something weird there. Um, can I get rid of that, please? Oh, I just made something weird on it. See if that's it. Click that. There we go. Um, so it's really essential to put all the paths in, um, just so you can kind of design the map around it. So once you know where you want the players to kind of go around the map, um, that's when you put, start putting the terrain in. So just follow the steps while I've done this video, and it should help you get a really amazing map by the end of it. So as I said, next video we're going to be using World Machine and we're going to actually create the map um, and all the different things on it and how come we've got a gap down there now? I have no idea. Let's fill that in. So yeah, we've got all these cities in as well. These All these different areas are going to be where we've kind of planned the players to encounter each other and they're based on probability. So the bigger cities are going to be where the players are most likely to encounter each other, small areas where they're less likely to. So that's really important too because it allows you to plan out where cities are going to go and towns and different features so players will be able to decide which path they choose whether they want to be more daring and have a higher chance of meeting other enemy groups in these red areas or have a fairly small chance but fairly pathetic loot um, to find in these green areas and kind of just average in these yellow so it, that is also really essential if you're wanting to make a map for like Minecraft and things like that so I certainly suggest doing that. Um, I think that's pretty much going to wrap up our video. So I think I'm going to wrap up the video here. I hope you've really enjoyed this bit of a tutorial. If you have enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave a like because I've spent a good few hours making this and I hope it's really helped some of you guys because uh, when I first started making maps, my maps were kind of jumbled and a bit chaotic and I find that this planning step here really does help refine what the map's going to look like um, and I hope it's really helped you guys too. Uh, sorry if it has been a bit of a boring video because it has just been concept and not really been doing anything interesting with any of the cool softwares. Uh, we've just been drawing it basically. And if you've really enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like it, please don't forget to subscribe and consider checking out some of my other videos because there's plenty more like this. I've done uh, world machine tutorials in the past on filters and things like that. So they'll, they'll be more applicable to the next video. But nonetheless, I hope you've enjoyed it and I guess I'll see you next time. Goodbye guys. Thanks from Crafting Redstone.